Living in Northern Ireland versus the rest of the UK No one needs to be reminded that Northern Ireland is a part of the UK. While it may have some things in common with the rest of Ireland, it has wisely chosen to remain a part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Even then, it appears to be living under the shadow of the other three kingdoms of England, Scotland and Wales. But that's not the real situation. As you likely have observed on many list-ranking cities and towns in the UK, those in Northern Ireland don't often get ranked among the top 10 or 20 bests or worsts. And when they do appear on those lists, they hardly come first or last. The question then is, does this make Northern Ireland cities and towns inferior or superior to those in the rest of the UK? What would you find if you engage in an exercise tagged living in Northern Ireland versus living in the rest of the UK? Isn't that going to be an interesting find? Follow along and let's check it out. The centenary celebration of its founding on 3rd of May 1921 provides a rare opportunity to take a look at how Northern Ireland is doing in comparison with the rest of the UK. You may be surprised to find that this smallest nation is outdoing the other nations in the United Kingdom on many metrics. Though hard to believe, it's true. And these are critical areas of the economy, development and basic social amenities that add value to human life. Employment and well-being For six consecutive years in the British Isles, Northern Ireland, which is incidentally the smallest, has had the lowest unemployment rate. Thus, while there may be more jobs in England or Scotland, there are more unemployed people in those places. The unemployment rate was at its lowest in late 2009, while tourism was providing a lot of jobs. Northern Ireland has the highest levels of well-being in the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD. In the UK, it's the only region with less than 10% of the people living on a persistent low income after housing costs. The number of children living in poverty in the last five years has continued to fall much below the UK figures. Nevertheless, Northern Ireland is not spared from the challenges being confronted by the rest of the UK. This region was in the news recently for reasons many hoped were long gone. It's about the riot that broke out in Belfast. Some say the real cause was the unionist discontent with Brexit. Others say the root was the decision to shield the 24 Sinn Féin politicians who allegedly breached COVID-19 rules during the funeral of the former IRA member. Still, there are those who believe that the violence was caused in part by an exasperation born out of leaving behind the working-class areas of Northern Ireland. Whatever the situation was, we think Northern Ireland had lived down that and had moved on. Education and training Here is an aspect where Northern Ireland isn't doing pretty well. When you have living in Northern Ireland compared to the rest of the UK in education, you find that Northern Ireland will be defeated. Even compared with the rest of the Republic of Ireland, it's in the middle of the table in the rank of people not in employment, education or training, or neat people. However, a closer look at the region will reveal more. Instructive is the 2016 report on educational attainment in the region, which reveals that the gap between the highest and lowest skilled workers was higher there than in any other OECD country. In West Belfast, educational achievement hasn't improved. According to the last deprivation report on the aspect of NEAT, about 65% of the pupils in one part of the Falls Road and 79% in parts of the Shank Hill didn't attain GCSEs or an equivalent qualification. If we are focusing on Belfast, the capital, you'll find that about 60% of school leavers in parts of the Shank Hill and Falls Road areas underachieve at school. We will then agree that Northern Ireland is behind the rest of the UK in education. This capital city has 37 of North Ireland's 50 worst areas in terms of educational deprivation. The neat rates for some parts of Belfast are between 10% and 17% of late teens and it's more acute among working class boys. Of course, this isn't a new problem and it's felt more keenly in unionist communities. Reporting on 20 years of findings, a Northern Ireland 2018 peace monitoring stated Protestant boys continue to have lower educational attainment than Catholic boys. Complicating this problem is the continued segregation in the region's educational system. Education is demarcated into controlled, mainly Protestant, Catholic-managed and integrated schools. The challenge of balancing the demands placed by the denominational, cultural and national vested interests creates a divided, splintered and expensive school system in Northern Ireland. The consequence of this is clearly manifest in the words of Richard Johnston of the Ulster University Economic Policy Centre when he said 
other countries are overtaking Northern Ireland in terms of educational outcomes and spending less on a per capita or per pupil basis, and therefore it must examine the efficiency of the current education system. Child poverty Still on living in Northern Ireland versus the rest of the UK, let's look at child poverty. What we found here is that child poverty levels in Northern Ireland are generally on par with the wider UK. However, the proportion of children in low-income families in parts of the region is high. A recently published figure shows that eight of Northern Ireland's 18 parliamentary constituencies are in the bottom third of the child poverty in the wider UK. At least one-fifth of the children living in those areas of 2019 lived in relative poverty. According to ward-level data prepared by the House of Commons Library, more than one-third of children in certain parts of Northern Ireland are in poverty. Les Allenby, the Chief Commissioner of the region's Human Rights Commission, admitted that child poverty was a severe problem in this part of the UK, where families are bigger on average. The Commissioner added, Six years ago, the High Court ruled that the Northern Ireland executive's failure to adopt an anti-poverty strategy was unlawful, yet six years on this has not been remedied. The lack of a future for some young people means they remain fertile ground for recruitment by loyalist and dissident Republican parliamentaries. Employment and employable Yes, Northern Ireland boasts the lowest unemployment rate in the UK, but it doesn't have enough employable labour. Across the board, the employment rate has never been among the best. For instance, in the first quarter of the year 2020, Northern Ireland has the lowest or second lowest employment rate, which stood at 69.4% compared with 75.1% in the rest of the UK. The reason for this is that there are not enough skilled workers who could fill vacant positions. There are relatively low levels of capital investment and innovation in Northern Ireland. The homegrown startups are not in great amounts. While there are higher levels of public sector employment, there are fewer well-qualified people world force than in neighbouring nations. So Northern Ireland ranks among the bottom two UK nations for employment and employable 103 of the past 115 quarters. It is the combination of these factors that lead to lower competitiveness and employment. Also, Northern Ireland has the highest rate of economically inactive people in the UK. This group includes homemakers, retirees, students, full-time caregivers, long-term sick and people living with a disability. What do you deduce from all of these? Northern Ireland may appear strong and have set records against its historical context. It's a weaker part of the UK. An argument that has been put forward is that Northern Ireland doesn't get bad media because it's the smallest of the four nations. Some say you hear less often about cities and towns there because they receive less in the number of international visitors. What do you think? Living in Northern Ireland versus the rest of the UK, which one is better? We count a lot on your comment. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. This is Learning Canteen.